Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How's your day going so far? It's it's been long. <laughs> I uh, yeah I worked a couple well, almost four hours at Target and then okay. came over here and mm -hmm. and um, I woke up a little early this morning and was able to go back to sleep and mm -hmm. let my alarm wake me up this morning, which doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, it's been a good morning. Uh, good. Any morning that I can wake up and see the sunshine and not hear the wind roaring, I'm yes. happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was nice, and it was it was a calm, it was a calm morning. So yeah, that was, that was a nice way to wake up. Um, yeah, I usually work from home for a little while on Tuesday mornings. It's kind of my little schedule, so um, it's been busy as well. But yeah. I do I do work. I feel like I get. Like there, I have like a little little Tuesday routine of things that I do, uh -huh. and I just punch through them at home, and it's really. Are you one of those people that likes the organized lifestyle? You wouldn't look in my office and see that. But yes. <laughs> um, like I especially like there are some things for some reason when when I'm sitting in my kitchen, I can just pound them out like really really quickly. Yeah. But if I know if I come here, I just. I don't know why, but I just feel like I just get distracted by. by yeah, things. well, there are a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. um, we we are ones that like to leave our doors open, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to be available. Yeah. And so, people walk by. There's a lot of things going on. Yeah, and and it doesn't take a lot. Yeah, to distract true. us. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you even so the person who stopped by might be watching this, so they want a distraction. <laughs> But like no. just just list just with them. yeah you're right when our doors are open mm -hmm. and somebody comes in we had a team leader come in today yeah talk about a few things and yeah. yeah it's just there's there's distractions it's good distractions yeah so many times you stopped by the coffee shop to deliver something to your wife and right. and, and had an opportunity to visit with um, someone from the congregation yeah. and those are awesome moments mm -hmm. um, yeah. but they change. Yep. Our routine. It changed my, yeah, it changed my day. Um, but I love that. Um, Me too. Yeah. So, well, this um, this week we, so we're still in our How the Bible Works series. Like, mm -hmm. big picture, we're still in kind of an overview of the entire Bible. And we talked about, um, we talked about the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We jumped into the New Testament a couple weeks ago with your with the message you mm -hmm. gave before Easter. Uh -huh. um, and then, of course, we talked about Jesus on Easter. Um, Imagine that. Yeah, one concept. <laughs> and, then, um, and then this week, we were talking, about, we're talking about the church and yeah. the purpose of the church. And I think we said this last week, but I'm going to say it again. Initially, that was going to be, I think, one and maybe two weeks um, of, of talking about the purpose of the church, ter purpose of God's people. We talked about that in this series when we were talking about the Israelites being God's people mm -hmm. and how now we as the church are God's people now. And just over, I don't know, as, as we were getting closer to this, this time post-Easter, um, I was reading some things in, a small, in two small groups that I've been leading about the mm -hmm. church. And just thinking like as we've as as people have as more people have come back over the last month and a half or so um, even a little bit longer to that um, I just felt like it was a good I just felt like it was a good ref, good time to remember why we're all here yeah yeah um, yeah I, I love the I love the the daily devotions that we're going through this week and how it fits into that also mm -hmm. um, and and this morning we were talking about um, in that devotion the de the bride of Christ yeah and um, the way that God looks at the body of Christ mm -hmm. and how yet the body of Christ is the bride of Christ right and how that fits together is so important right that we understand right and you're talking so when you say that you're talking specifically about the bible version the U version bible reading plan for this right week. right yes yeah. so i so i am um, i have not had the chance i have not oh you haven't been in it yet <laughs> so you like so, so going back to that routine thing um 
Man, uh, honestly, up until up until last week, um, I I wake up and like I there are th- there have been three things that I've been reading every morning. Like right when uh, I wake up, yeah. I have a coffee and it's like boom, boom, boom. And that one, the the U version Bible reading plan has. Um, like that's the one that suffered a little. I did it. I read it yesterday, but I I, I haven't read. It, so thank you for that reminder. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's the one that suffered over over the last um, couple of days. So um, that's so we'll, we're going to come back to that. I want okay. I want to okay. press pause on that. Yeah, because yep. that's because that's one of the things we sort of talked about on Sunday. Right. So right. so as we just re as we've continued to regather, mm-hmm. um, really felt like this was a great time to. To remind those who have, um, who've been a part of Westway for a long time, mm-hmm. who are coming back, who have been back, but also to connect with, um, connect with the people that have been new to Westway yeah. over the last six months, and it like, um, there's a lot. There are, there are a lot of new folks. Like I want to say, it's refreshing. It's got to be. Tw- I would say easy twenty families. Yeah, wouldn't you? Say very close to that, um, yeah, if not more. And so we just had so many. We've had so many newer people, like now, mostly just newer to our community from other communities coming up. Mm-hmm. And just really want to make sure, like everyone remembers why we do the things that we do. Yeah. And it's not it, yeah. like this could have been a like another Westway Vision series, <laughs> and it's really not that. We want to go back to. We want to go back and look at what Scripture says about who we're called to be as as a church. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this week, this week we talked about two things. We talked about Christ. Christ is the head of the church. So we we uniquely relate to Christ as the head of the church, and then we t- well, and then we talked about how the church is a creation of Christ. So he kind of he puts it together the way he wants it to, which is what we're going to talk more about next Sunday. Yeah. Um, but that just that idea of Christ being the head of the church. Mm-hmm. When you we talked about this on Sunday, um, I'm curious, like what have been what have been some things that have been rolling further rolling around in your mind as you think about Jesus like really being in charge um, yeah. here at Westway. That metaphor, if you will, of the head of the body. Mm-hmm. Um, in our heads, we have a brain. Mm. And, and everything that happens in our body goes through the brain. Yeah. In some way, shape, or form, there is a connection from the brain to every single part of our body. Um, and I obviously am not a medical person to explain that would be way beyond what I want to even try to do. But it amazes me that from the tip of my toes to the top of my head, everything is connected and runs according to mm. how my brain works. Yeah. And so when you think of the illustration that Paul used in Ephesians 4 and 1 Corinthians, um, how, how he talks about the body is, that the church is a body, mm. the body of Christ, and it's made up of many parts. All of those parts rely upon the head. And get their signals, if you will, yeah. from the head. Mm-hmm. And um, in the same way, it's Christ that gives the body the information that they need to function correctly. Right. Yeah. And that and that that brain concept. We're gonna so so this coming Sunday we're gonna talk about First Corinthians twelve. Okay. And then the following <laughs> Sunday we're gonna talk about Romans twelve. Yes. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that Paul writes in Romans twelve is we should not be uh, we should not be conformed. And this is probably the NIV um, <laughs> NIV NLT combo. Uh, we should not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but right. we should we should have our minds transformed. transformed. And renewed. Yeah. So just when you were talking about G- Christ as the brain, mm-hmm. as as the head, um, he had cr- he doesn't have a transform mind because he doesn't need a transform mind because he's God. <laughs> but but I think there's an element for us as we think about God as being the head, 
Um, he thinks differently than we do. Mm -hmm. So, so we want to, we want to ensure that the things that we are doing are in line with what, with what he's commanded us to do. Mm -hmm. And we find that in scripture yeah. and are aligned then with his, with his mindset. So, so this week, as we, we think about what we're going, one of the things we're going to talk about is God is more interested in, in who we are as a church rather than, 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 than what we do. Yeah. It's not that what yeah. we do doesn't matter. Right. Right. But who we are matters more. Mm -hmm. And that comes from up here. So we want to have that, we want to have that mindset of Christ. We want to pursue that mindset of Christ. Um, so, so, so some of the ways that we do that are by spending time in scripture yeah. and taking our cues from scripture rather than taking our cues from maybe I read this article or you read an article or right. like those things aren't wrong, nope. but we have a, but we have a filter that we want to run that through. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that filter is always the scripture Yeah, because the scripture is Christ. Yeah. The word. And, and we talked about that before in, uh, when we talked about the, the Gospels and how John started his Gospel. You also talk Sunday morning about a lot of churches, when they think about the head, oftentimes they'll think about maybe a pastor right. being the lead of right. the church. Or maybe it's, um, it's the elders yeah. that are the lead. And it's interesting that if you were to talk to, excuse me, any of our elders, here at Westway, you would, and, and say, you guys are the leaders. Well, they would say, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Christ is our leader. Right. And, and, and the elders would say that Christ is the leader of our church. We answer to him and we are being transformed to do his work here through his word and everything we do, it goes through that filter. Right, and and one of the ways that Christ leads is through our elders, yes. through our pastors. Mm -hmm. But that that organizational chart doesn't stop at our elders. No. It, no. Goes, it goes next level up, which is a, a really big jump because it's, <laughs> because it's Jesus. Yeah. Um, there's a, it might, if we were to draw it out, it might look significantly closer than what, than what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, when we think about what that practically looks like, we, we sort of count on the reality that, that every one of our elders, every one of our pastors is in a, is in a thriving, um, deepening relationship with Christ. Yes. So yeah. that, um, it is sort. It is. It is a sort of so that, so that what we are, who we are being made into, and what we're doing, is is in relationship to what Christ is doing. Right. So that, right. so again, there's like I, the, the phrase I used on Sunday was a kind of our church body is a, is our check on that and in, in, mm -hmm. in reading and understanding scripture. Mm -hmm. Our elders are. I would say that our elders are the check on us as pastors. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say as pastors, we can serve as a check on our elders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so like that sounds really kind of strange, but if we're again, like our desire is for all of our pastors, elders, and even every and everyone within our body. I should right. say even. Right. Everyone within our bodies reading, studying scripture, praying, deepening their own relationships. So if we hear something that that doesn't quite match up to what the Bible has to say or to what Jesus has said. Mm -hmm. Like we can we can raise a hand, we can call yeah. time out, we can yeah. raise a hand and and have a conversation about what that about yeah. what that looks like. I love I love our meetings um, with the elders and pastors and and the topic almost always within that meeting comes around to well it says this yeah in this passage and yeah. and that is so refreshing yeah. to me to know that that is the guideline. And um, and if and if somebody's reading through the scripture and they see something that that throws up that flag, then it's mentioned right. with with freedom and um, and understanding that we expect that and desire that and yeah. and embrace that, if yeah. you will. Yeah, I, I so honestly <laughs> I, I love walking into our elders meeting every Monday knowing yeah. that we're going to have a conversation about something that we talked about on Sunday. Yep. And a lot of and I shouldn't say a lot of that. Some of that is. Um, is good because often, not always, 
I'll say many times, we've already had a pre-conversation about what we're going to talk about on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So just like we did yesterday in our in our staff meeting, mm-hmm. we we read through uh, 1 Corinthians 12 verses 7 to 31 because that's that's what's gonna that's what's gonna serve as um, as the bulk of the text for our Sunday message. Yeah. So so there are times in those conversations to work through mm-hmm. what what does this say? What does this mean? Why did why did the NLT say that? Why did Paul write this? What did he What's mean? the context? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just I just I love that. I love I love being part of part of a church and a and a church leadership in which um, we talk about what the Bible yeah. says together, what Christ means. Because I was taught, we had a couple, speaking of, um, speaking of being, having people step by your office, I had, <laughs> I had a couple um, that has not been to Westway yet mm-hmm. in my office yesterday. And we were, we were kind of talking about the way, the way we typically preach through things and talk about scripture. And I just said, you know, I have, I have lots of pet topics in my mind that I would love to just talk about all the time, yeah. but but that's not that's not always beneficial for the body. Right, right. We want to talk about things that push us and challenge us and help us grow. Mm-hmm. So that and that forces us to hear from from God, our head, what our body needs needs to hear yeah. in the midst of that. Yeah, it's so signals going back and forth. You know, we every Sunday um, if you watch online or if you watch in the auditorium on the screen you'll see the little deal about text if you have a question yeah that's a signal coming from the toe or the or the fingers mm-hmm. or the ear or whatever it is saying hey i have a question about this right and and so that that sends that question back and we go to christ right and um find the right signal to go back to that it's it, that's the way the body stays connected yeah and I, there's lots of little tools that are set up for that yeah i a minute ago and i <laughs> I really like the way you said that, that scripture is Christ. Um, and we should probably, we should, we should talk more about that. That's, we should have a, we should have a Q, like we should have a Q and A where we talk about that. <laughs> because that like, man, yeah, in the being was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Um, the, the, um, you know the word is the word is sharper than any double-edged sword. Yeah, I think I think when you make a statement like Scripture is Christ, um, we could at, we could have a lot of interesting conversations about when um, when Paul uses or in, in the Bible when it talks about the word being things is is are they talking about this? Or are they talking about Jesus? Like that, that's kind of an interesting yeah. conversation for me. Yeah. Um, so sometime we should kind of want to come back because <laughs> um, I that was a, that, like you snuck that in there. That was good. But yeah, I mean we so so one of the things that we believe here at Westway is that when I or you when we read the Bible we are um, we are reading. God's word. Yeah. This is yeah. This is from him. Mm-hmm. And that I know like means it could mean lots of different things to lots of different people about like you know, it's God whispering in their ear or something right. like that. Um, but we believe one of the ways that Jesus is the head of Westway Christian Church is is through is through the reading of his word. Mm-hmm. Um so if we want to know what he commands, what he wants, what he desires, um, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us that certainly guides right. and certainly directs. Right. And we're going to, on um, on May 23rd, I think, I'm getting really good with dates. Um, <laughs> I think on May 23rd is Pentecost. So we're yeah. going to talk about what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is in the life of the Christian. Yeah. Um, so not to minimize the work of the Spirit, like... Um, because he's a fully functioning member of, of the Trinity. Mm-hmm. Um, and when one of the ways that we demonstrate that Christ is our head is by spending time in Scripture yeah. and taking our cues um, from that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm glad you mentioned the Spirit, because when you talk about leaders and leadership, 
um, when leaders were chosen in the scripture, one of the things that, that was an identifier as to who should be a leader was if they were led by the Spirit. Yeah. And, and they showed um, that they were led, uh, were in tune with, with the Spirit. And um, the, the fruits of the Spirit is how we identify that. And when we were talking in small group last night about leadership mm-hmm. um, and, and how do we recognize if, if we're under the authority of Christ, right. um, that's one of the ways we can do that mm-hmm. <laughs> is through love, joy, peace. Are we showing those things that are um, examples of the work of the Spirit in our lives? The other thing, the other thing that we talked about was how God creates the church, or how Christ creates the church. The church yeah. is a creation of Christ, mm-hmm. and that was the that was the when we talked about Ephesians four. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked about this, I know, because we just spent a year on Ephesians on the church at Ephesus. But we talked about how um, God has given gifts to the church for um, for certain very specific things. Um, and the, the purpose of those gifts is, this is Ephesians 4.12, um, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Okay, so like this is just one of those things where I see things like four days later and I'm like, oh, that would have been a good one. <laughs> um, it says that the, their resp- our responsibility is to equip the, God's people to do his work. Not not my work, right. not your work, right. not our yeah. work, his work. Like yeah. man, that would have been a good that would have been a good thing. To talk about. <laughs> um, and build up the church, the body of Christ. So what what does we talked a little bit about this? What in your mind? What does what does equipping the people at Westway look like? And what does um, well? We'll just stop there because. What's we'll stuff? What what does it look like for us to equip yeah. God's people at Westway? Yeah, and, and that's that's a great question. Um, there are a lot of ways that we strive to equip people. I think the biggest thing that we want to focus on, and this is this is part of our mission, vision, values, and preferred culture, is every uh, uh, every situation is a discipling. Uh, opportunity right and so we want to equip people to be able to make disciples and how do we do that Um, we do that through um, being present present in the 1015 present in small groups present in our ministry teams um, present in um, doing mission work in our communities Um, being together yeah Um, that's part of it um, Sunday school classes equip people with tools to learn how to study and hear what God is saying through his word. Um, small groups do the same thing. Um, those, those are two great areas, and the ministry teams, as far as that goes, are great areas in forming community with one another and, and building relationships with one another. Um, those are ways that we equip people. Um, the study of the word should be taking place in all of those situations. Right. And and that's the probably the biggest way yeah. that we equip. Yeah, and <clears throat> I briefly touched on this, but what, one of the things that one of the one of the reasons that I kind of teach the way that I do is I I really want to reveal the possibility that that you can that people who do not who haven't been to Bible college right, right. can read the Bible and come away with the exact same conclusions that we do. Yeah. And I know that there are there are some aspects of, of, of scripture reading that are that are that are easier than others, some are more difficult than others. But the bottom line is when we we want to we want to not just teach content, we want to teach people how to do things. Yes. Um, yeah. give them the tools that they need to be able to do that for themselves. Mm-hmm. So like even even just a few minutes ago, stopping at that word his. Yeah. Like that's how we want to teach you how to read the Bible so that when you come across like we like we want to we want to cue you up so that when you come across a statement like that, mm-hmm. a phrase like that, you can press pause and you can 
try and understand what's really happening in the text. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just saw this. I don't know. Like you shared with me your notes from last night, so it might have been there. So, I, but I don't want to look at it. <laughs> like we don't want to just. Um, oh, it was in your. It was in the small group piece. Yeah. You talked about we are. It said something like we are facilitators, not theological instructors. Yes. Did, did I get that? That's, Am that, I pretty yeah, close? That's that's real close. Okay. <laughs> so um, good. So yeah. we are we are facilitators of of what we read in the in the Bible. Uh, J my son John said this a few years ago that I shared. My job on a Sunday morning is to facilitate mm -hmm. a conversation between the people that are hearing the message and the text. That's my job. Yeah. And I think what would it look like? What would it look like for us to have this mindset of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is a facilitator of information between the Scripture and my my head, my heart, yeah. my hands. Um, and I think I think that is just really important. And we talk about the Bible all the time. We talk about the importance of reading the Bible all the time. You might be sick of hearing about it. We're never going to not talk about it. Um, but I, that that equipping piece through, not just through teaching. No, right? relationships. But through relationships is yeah. really important for yeah. us. Yeah, and one of the things that, that we'll be talking a lot more about with small groups here in the near future is um, building a relationship, first of all, with God. And then with other Christians, and then with those who aren't Christians. Right. And that's the relationships that God desires for us to have. Right. And, and that comes through this time we spend with Christ and his word. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I, Go ahead. I, one, of the, one of the things that when you were talking about um, getting to the point where we understand that we don't have to have the Bible college education mm -hmm. to be able to understand scripture, that's one of the things I love about the, the little devotions that we do, the YouVersion devotions every day is there's opportunity and, 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 and you're encouraged to share what speaks to you today right. from this. And I have totally enjoyed yeah. reading um, those little comments where people have, have stopped and said, aha, mm -hmm. that, that's to me. Right. That's something that God is speaking to me about. Right. And, and that's, that is really that relationship that we're developing. With, yeah. with God yeah. and, and his just, family. And just trying to expose people to multiple different ways to read and understand the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, because this is, and so this again, this is Romans 12 in two weeks. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to, 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 to change and, and, and be transformed in the way that we process information. In the way that we think about the world, in the way that we look at the world, yeah. in the way that we interact with the world. And... That comes, according to Paul in Romans 12, that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And a primary way that he does that is this. Yeah. So by getting yeah. into by getting into God's word, we really have the opportunity to to understand what God desires for us. Mm -hmm. Because he's the head, not me, not you, not our elders. Right. Um, he's yeah. the he's the head. Um, I, I think it's also important to see that um, the resp okay, so sticking at, at verse um, 12, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So, so not only are we we're equipping you, and I'm being equipped as well, mm -hmm. but we are equipping you to not only um, do God's work, but build up the body. Yeah. Like, it is, it is <clears throat> my job, it's your job, it's the job of our elders— but realistically, it's. I want to be. This is like where we just want to be cautious. It's really kind of you, more of your job than mine. And and here's here's what I mean by that. And this is the last message we're going to talk about in the series. Um, I don't live in your neighborhood. Right. I don't live in your neighborhood. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I don't work at Target. Yeah. You work at Target. I do. Yeah. Um, you don't go to. Uh, well, you might. Yeah, I don't know if you go to Cappuccino and Company as much as I do. Not as much, um, but I am there so. <laughs> I go to Cappuccino and Company every Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, you don't do that. No. So, so God has God has strategically placed mm -hmm. every believer somewhere. Yeah. In a neighborhood, 
in a home, um, in a town, in a place of employment, mm -hmm. around around certain family members. Mm -hmm. um, like, I think of uh, I think of school. Yeah, uh, kids in school. There are groups that that you associate with within your classes in school. Right. Um, maybe it's a sporting event, right. a group of, or maybe it's agricultural group or yeah. whatever. There are lots of areas that we're unique so that, to. So that, that's up to eight. <laughs> uh, I was going to keep going and you jumped right in and that was perfect. But I mean, think about, think about all of the things that we all, that we are all interested in, mm -hmm. the, all of the different relationships that, yeah. that, that we're involved in and engaged in. God has, God has not placed us in those places um, like there are people that I know in Scotts Bluff that are that Scotts Bluff and Gearing that are runners. Um, I don't think that God's sole purpose in putting me in relationship with those people is so that we could just go run together. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Nope. That's nope. great. That's I'd good. love to be able to do that. Yeah. But I have I have a I have a role and a responsibility in every one of those relationships mm -hmm. to per, to be on mission. To proclaim Jesus as Lord to mm -hmm. those people, yeah, and that doesn't just mean whenever we go out for a run, the whole time I'm just telling them about Jesus, right? It, it's it's the way we talk about things. It's the way when a driver does something rude, how um, I don't you know give him the bird. <laughs> um, like we we, yeah. have, we just have so many opportunities to be on mission, yeah. And you like I have a I, like my mission is to reach my neighborhood. That's not your mission. Your mission is to reach your neighborhood or your school or your family right. or your interest group or probably 25 more things that we could come up yeah. with. Yeah. And I, I think when, when our, when that church, I'll just say the church, and then I'll say our church body, when we get that, um, like we talked about at the end of the message, I think it will, I think, I think it will be easy to bring people to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And to understand that wherever we go, we represent him. Um, I think I think of uh, maybe we're standing in line at the grocery store and something happens that upsets us. We're in a hurry and somebody's in front of us. And how we react yeah. to those situations, people know who we are oftentimes. Yeah. And, and they're going to uh, form an opinion about the church. Right. Um, from our actions. Yeah. And and so that's really important. And it may be the way that we react to that situation that may say, oh, I want some of that. I right. want to know where, how are they able to control themselves in that way? Right. Where does that power come from? Yeah. And even if they don't, we're still representative of Jesus. We like, still are. It's yeah. funny, on Sunday we talked about how Christ is the head of the church, not me, not you. Um, but I, you know what, I've been in Scotts Bluff now for a little bit more than four years. And even though I am not the head of Westway Christian right. Church, I'm pretty confident that there are, because of the relationships <laughs> that I've built with, mm -hmm. with different churches and with different people in our community, I'm pretty confident that when I walk into a place and I see people, I think they know who I am. Right. And I'm, yeah. that's, I'm not bragging about, like, nope. I'm, there's none of that. I think there's a reality that people know that I'm a pastor, they know I'm a pastor at Westway Christian Church. Yeah. Um, so like, and and as important as that is, like as much as I want to represent Westway, because right. I do, I'm really more focused on the way I represent Christ. Yeah. yeah. So, so last week in our in our Thursday night small group, we actually made a list of of I think there are like 25 things on this list of all of the ways that people in our that that I can be on mission in my life, yeah. not as a pastor. Yeah. And we're gonna sh I'm gonna share that list in a couple weeks. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and I think there are some people that that I think there are probably some people that hear things like that. You know, don't respond negatively in the grocery store. I think there are some people that that might hear that and be like, "That's not that big of a deal." Mm. That's really. I mean, yeah. you know, John, you you preach every Sunday. Or Joe, you lead a small group every every Tuesday and Monday. Or Mike, you work with our kids. So so how can how can being you know a good Christian person at 
Walmart or Target even compare to the opportunity to, 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 yeah. to vocalize and verbalize the gospel. And it's more important. I, I think yeah. it is more important. Yeah, it's more important that my life outside of this right. building uh, represent Christ. Right. Um, just as important, I would say more important. Yeah. yeah. And that's why like when we, when we kind of talk about this, man, don't, please don't have the mindset. And I, I, this isn't something I've heard a lot here. Um, but I've certainly been to, been involved and engaged in other churches where the mindset was, oh, if I can just if I can just get my friend or my neighbor to come to come to church, yeah. they'll hear something that the pastor is going to say, and and I mean that's you know that could happen. I don't want to I don't want to take away from God what he what he could do right. in a situation. But man, just you have you have so much more influence in your day to day life with people who don't know Christ than anything. Um, like just yeah. One of the things I want to make sure we clarify here is is that it shouldn't have to be something that we struggle to do. Is that a, is that a good way to put it? Yeah. Um, to me, what I do on wherever I am, whether it be here or at Target or wherever, um, is a, is an indication of what's here. And, and when we build that relationship with Christ and his body, then what I do elsewhere should be changing because we're being transformed, like you mentioned from Romans. And, and so, yes, I want to be careful, but it isn't something that I should have to really struggle with doing because I'm being transformed into his image and what's in here is should be what people see. So and that's my I, desire. So then, I, so <laughs> so I shouldn't be someone different on Sunday, right? Simply because I'm in a physical space, right? Than who I am on Monday, right? That's I should be, and yeah. I should be the same person. Yeah, yeah. So I shouldn't yeah. have a. I shouldn't have a. This is. I shouldn't. This is my church behavior, and then I, and then I. <laughs> Pull out of the parking lot at eleven forty-five and go be a jerk to somebody at yeah. the gro- at the grocery store or a restaurant. Yeah, and that's not to say that we don't make mistakes. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it's not to say that that's not that's not it's not difficult because right. that can be difficult. It can be. Yeah. 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 That we're <laughs> yeah we're bombarded with all of the the struggles and issues that that any everyone else is. Right. And and it is it is difficult. But that's, that's why I was trying to choose my words wisely there. Um, I want what I do, wherever I am, to be an indication of what's here. Which, yeah, so perfect. Which is why what we're going to talk about on this Sunday is God is more interested in who we are than what we do. Yeah. What we do matters, but what we do flows from who we are. Yeah. Who we really are. So if I'm... If I come in here on Sunday and I and I act one way, and then I go home or I go out in out in public and behave a different way, I I need to have um, an internal conversation and I need to seek God's wisdom on which one of those is the real me. Yeah. Like who who am I really? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why God's desire is is to is to transform our minds, mm-hmm. to to transform our hearts. Um, God wants us to be new people. He doesn't want us to just do different things. Right. Because there's a, like, I can be, if I wanted to be, and I don't, which is the problem. Um, like, if I wanted to be, I, you know, I could be a good moral person. Sure. I yeah. could, I could behave. Um, I could, I could not watch certain things. Like, I could, mm-hmm. I could draw the line at rated R movies. And, right. And not that there's, any, that, that there's not wisdom in those things. But that's, um, I don't. I, I just don't see God as as necessarily being interested in those external things. Yeah. It's yeah. not again. It's not that they don't matter. But right. He's, right. He's more interested yeah. in who we are than what we do. Yeah. And and, and I don't want to steal your thumb, uh, thunder from Sunday, but but when this is right, yeah, those other things fall in place. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So um, that's what we had for today. This Sunday, we're going to talk about First Corinthians twelve verses seven to thirty one. Um, all of you are on Facebook because you're on here. 
Um, we wanted to just uh, make sure you got the news. Miranda shared it on Sunday. Mm. Um, we posted it on Facebook, posted it in a few other places. There's an email um, that went out also this morning. Um, we've, uh, we've offered the, the role of Pastor of Creative Arts to Cody Peterson. Mm -hmm. um, and he and his family have, um, have accepted that. They're going to be moving here over the, next, uh, over the next several months, and we're excited about that. Yep. And just ask for you to be um, to be in prayer for them as they sell their house in the process of finding something here. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you those things are are, are are going well and moving quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is cool. Because <laughs> yeah. um, because I talked with Cody yesterday, and um, like I was excited at, at the end of the phone call because he wants to be here. Yeah, um, he can't wait. <laughs> I, when I I said, I mean, when I when I came here, um, I had about a six day gap between when I when I moved here and when I kind of officially started, and he was like, "I'm just ready to be there." So, um, <laughs> I, we're excited that he's here. Yeah. Um, we're thankful for the for the excitement and the support from our from our church body, and just ask that you would continue to pray for them, um, pray for our church in that transition, pray for our um, creative arts team in the middle of that transition yeah. because as, as Miranda just put it so well yeah um, on um, on Sunday Cody's Cody's not going to be Shane right Cody's not going to be Becky there'll be little tweaks and little adjustments that that we all have to make mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm just excited to see what he's going to bring and what he's going to offer yeah. and how God's equipped him and how Megan's going to serve and their kids are going to fit into our body and yeah. Um, yeah, just really excited about that. So I would add to the prayers, um, pray for the church in Lamar too. Yeah. Um, because that yeah. Cody, when Cody leaves, they all need to replace him there. Right. And, and they're in that process now uh, because um, there will be the absence of a leader there. Right. And so pray for them also as they, as they work through that. Yeah. So thanks for watching with us today. Um, we will um, see you Sunday morning at 10 15, either in person or um, or or live if you're in the area and you're able to be out. I um, also want to say if you have not been to Next Steps yet, yes, um, we'd love for you to um, to sign up and and come to that. Um, that there will be a link in tomorrow's email um, telling you how to do that. And um, we have, we just want to we want to continue to learn and grow, um, get to know you, help you get to know us as a church, and so we can be about doing the things that God's called us to. Yeah, I would add, if, if you were interested in coming to Next Steps and you don't get the email, you can contact one of us and we'll make sure yeah. you get the link to register for that. Yeah, so. yeah just contact us here at the <clears throat> office, um, 635-2654, and we will connect you. We'll get you signed up and yeah. tell you what you need to know about that. Yeah. Um, so thanks for watching today. Love you guys. Praying with you, praying for you. God bless your week. And we'll see you later this week. <laughs>